The massacre of the Latins in 1182 is a tragic and brutal episode in the history of the Byzantine Empire and the early Christian Church. This event, rooted in religious intolerance, political intrigue and economic rivalry, resulted in the widespread slaughter of Latin Christians in Constantinople. To understand this atrocity, it is crucial to delve into the background of Byzantine-Latin relations, the key players involved, and the socio-political landscape of the time. By the 12th century, Constantinople was the economic hub of the Byzantine Empire and a melting pot of cultures. The Latin or Western European community, primarily composed of merchants from Venice, Genoa and Pisa, played a significant role in the city's commerce. However, the relationship between the local Greek Orthodox population and the Latin Catholics was fraught with tension due to religious differences and economic competition. The Great Schism of 1054 had formalized the division between the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church. Disputes over theological doctrines, liturgical practices, and ecclesiastical authority had created a deep-seated animosity between the two branches of Christianity. This schism provided a backdrop of religious mistrust that exacerbated the socio-political tensions in Constantinople. The Byzantine Empire in the late 12th century was marked by political instability. Emperor Manuel Thoth Komnenos, a ruler with pro-Western leanings, had died in 1180, leaving his young son Alexios II Komnenos as his successor. The regency, led by the Empress Mother Maria of Antioch, was unpopular due to her Western origins and perceived favoritism towards the Latin community. Andronikos then Komnenos, a cousin of Manuel I, capitalized on the widespread discontent. Known for his charisma and ruthlessness, Andronikos had a history of rebellion and ambition. He presented himself as a champion of the Greek Orthodox faith and the Greek populace, promising to rid Constantinople of Latin influence and corruption. The Latin merchants had gained significant economic privileges under previous emperors, which caused resentment among local Greek traders. The Venetians, in particular, had a dominant position in the city's trade, further inflaming tensions. Economic envy and competition fueled the animosity between the two communities. In April 1182, as Andronikos Nikomnenos made his move to seize power, he incited anti-Latin sentiments. His supporters spread rumors of Latin plots and betrayals, creating a climate of fear and hatred. The volatile mix of political instability, religious schism and economic rivalry erupted into violence. A mob, likely orchestrated by Andronikos and his allies, attacked the Latin Quarter. The violence was brutal and indiscriminate. Latin men, women and children were slaughtered, churches were desecrated, homes were looted and many were subjected to horrific tortures. The methods of torture and execution were particularly gruesome, reflecting the deep-seated hatred and desire for retribution against the Latin community. One of the most atrocious acts involved impaling. Victims were mounted on stakes, a slow and agonizing form of execution designed to inflict maximum suffering. Others were flayed alive, their skin peeled off as they endured unimaginable pain. These torturous methods served not only as punishment, but also as a terrifying message to any potential sympathizers or future Latin settlers. The massacre had severe economic repercussions. The Latin merchants who survived fled the city, causing a significant disruption in trade. The Byzantine economy, already struggling, suffered further from the loss of these key economic players. The departure of skilled Latin artisans and traders left a void that the local economy could not easily fill, leading to a period of economic decline. 
The massacre and the subsequent usurpation by Andronikos led to a period of political instability in the Byzantine Empire. Andronikos's tyrannical rule alienated many, leading to his eventual overthrow and death in 1185. His end was as brutal as his reign. He was captured, blinded, and left to the mob, who tortured and executed him in a public spectacle. The massacre shocked Western Europe. The papacy and the Italian city-states, particularly Venice, were outraged. The event exacerbated tensions between the Byzantine Empire and Western Christendom, setting the stage for future conflicts. The news of the massacre spread rapidly, provoking a wave of anti-Greek sentiment and calls for retribution. The long-term consequences of the massacre of the Latins were profound. The distrust and animosity between the Byzantines and the Latins contributed to the disastrous Fourth Crusade. The Fourth Crusade from 1202 to 1204 was initially intended to conquer Muslim-controlled Jerusalem by means of an invasion through Egypt. However, the crusade was diverted and instead the crusaders turned their attention to Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire. Several factors contributed to this redirection, including financial difficulties, Venetian influence and internal Byzantine politics. The Crusaders lacked sufficient funds to pay the Venetians for their fleet. As a result, the Venetians proposed that the Crusaders assist them in capturing the Christian city of Zara, or Zada, to repay their debt, which the Crusaders reluctantly agreed to despite it being a Christian city. At the same time, the Byzantine Empire was embroiled in internal conflict. The deposed Byzantine prince Alexios IV Angelos sought the Crusaders' aid to reclaim his throne from his uncle, Alexios III Angelos, promising substantial rewards and support for the Crusade in return. In 1203, the Crusaders laid siege to Constantinople. Alexios IV was installed as co-emperor, but he failed to fulfill his promises of payment and support. Discontent among the Crusaders and the Byzantines grew leading to Alexios IV's overthrow and murder in a palace coup. On April 13, 1204, the Crusaders breached the walls of Constantinople and commenced a three-day sack of the city. The atrocities committed during this sack were among the most severe in medieval history. Churches, palaces and homes were looted and destroyed. Priceless relics and treasures were taken many of which ended up in Western Europe. Thousands of citizens were killed, and many others were subjected to brutal assaults, including rape. The Crusaders showed little mercy, targeting both the wealthy and the poor. The Crusaders desecrated the Hagia Sophia and other churches. Sacred relics were stolen and altars were violated. The sacrilege shocked the Byzantine population and further deepened the religious divide. Following the sack, the Crusaders established the Latin Empire of Constantinople, ruling the city and its surrounding territories from 1204 to 1261. The Latin rulers faced constant resistance from the Byzantine populace and rival Byzantine successor states. Several Byzantine successor states emerged, including the Empire of Nicaea, the Despotate of Epirus and the Empire of Trebizond. These states sought to reclaim Byzantine territories and restore the Byzantine Empire. In 1261, Michael VIII Palaiologos, ruler of the Empire of Nicaea, successfully recaptured Constantinople, restoring the Byzantine Empire. However, the empire never fully recovered from the devastation of the Fourth Crusade and the subsequent Latin occupation. The Fourth Crusade and the sack of Constantinople had profound and lasting effects on both the Byzantine Empire and the broader Christian world. The event solidified the schism between the Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholic churches, fostering centuries of mistrust and hostility. The weakened Byzantine Empire struggled to defend itself against rising external threats, including the Ottoman Turks, who eventually conquered Constantinople in 1453.
The massacre of the Latins and the subsequent Fourth Crusade provide a powerful example of how religious and political conflicts can lead to devastating violence and long-lasting enmity. The brutality of these events and their far-reaching consequences underscore the need for vigilance against the forces of intolerance and fanaticism. The legacy of these events continues to resonate, offering crucial lessons for future generations.